Kaiju number 8 might be worse than we think. The Jump Plus series has been a major staple for what's felt like a couple of years now, so it's only natural that it's finally getting an anime. And everyone is talking about the anime, seeing as how the official trailer already has over a million views. But obviously, not all of this is good, as most people are talking about whatever the heck this is. And it gets worse. There are inherent flaws with this manga that might have already doomed the anime. Couple that with the fact that nobody really talks about the manga like they used to, and this anime might be dead before it even hits the ground. So let's talk about what happened and whether or not Kaiju Number 8 will really be worth watching. Now, like I said before, Kaiju Number 8 has kind of been a big name for a while now, and for good reason. The series follows the story of Kafka, a guy in his 30s who cleans up after Kaiju battles after having previously failed to join the Kaiju Defense Forces as a young adult. But once his body is actually taken over by a kaiju and he becomes this weird hybrid, he's able to use his new kaiju powers to join the defense force and restore the dreams that he had lost before. The story stands out right away as although it uses the familiar trope of a main character with monstrous or demonic abilities, Kafka is a much older character than the usual shonen teenager. As a result, Kaiju Number 8 is built up as a mature story that stands to prove how it's never too late to follow your dreams even when you've given up before. It's a story that resonates with the usual audiences, but also feels painfully familiar and uplifting for the older audiences that grew up with all of the classics like Naruto and One Piece. Now of course, there's more than a few other things that also led to the series' popularity. Of course, with it being a kaiju series, the designs of the kaiju are all insanely cool. Also, just the fact that it's a kaiju series in general helps this series stand out, since not only are there not a whole lot of kaiju series currently running, but there's also not that many science fiction or science fantasy ones as well. There's also the designs of the main characters, like Kafka's childhood friend who just so happens to have a giant sniper rifle and a pet tiger. There's also Shinomiya, the girl with spiky pigtails who fights people with a giant axe. There's also Soshiro, the character that slices up kaiju with his swords like a badass ninja. And there's a bunch more. Couple all of those gorgeous character designs with great paneling and dynamic fights, and it's no wonder people ever got addicted to this manga. And the evidence is pretty clear on this. After the release of Volume 9 back in March of 2023, the series was said to have over 11 million copies in circulation. And if you go online, you can find a ton of videos saying how Kaiju Number 8 is the next Attack on Titan, or Kaiju Number 8 is going to be the next big thing. And here we are with the anime where, yeah, it kind of looks like those people were right. Unfortunately, it only looks that way. The reality is that Kaiju Number 8 has been on a decline for a while now. But before I say more on that, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, like I was saying, Kaiju Number 8 reached 11 million copies in March, but by December of that same year, it only reached 12 million copies. That means in about a year, it only sold a million copies, which is still a lot, but when you look at its sales before, it's a fraction of what they used to be. Part of this is because we lost that initial hype from before, but a lot of it becomes pretty obvious once you follow the manga. As more characters are introduced and the stakes are raised again and again, Kafka doesn't really change as a character. There's less focus on him and his development as we focus on these newer characters, and there's really nothing ever referenced about his wanting to be a new person like before. It feels like all of his dialogue can pretty much be reduced to, I'm gonna beat the kaiju, or I'm gonna get stronger. Which is fine, but it also presents the series' main character as a shell of his former self, and seemingly kills any of his potential character growth. And you get a similar effect on the overall plot. At first, the story goes from Kafka's transformation, to him proving himself in the Defense Force, to the whole team then working together to stop these new kinds of kaiju. Then the next arc is them training, and then stopping these new kinds of kaiju. And then the next arc is them training, and then having to stop these new kinds of kaiju. Hopefully this is equally as boring for you as it is for me. Granted, the fights always look good and they're fun enough to read, but after a while, it just feels like a broken record. So you take the main character, who seemingly has no more character arcs, and you take the plot, which just keeps recycling the same basic story beats, and eventually you start to wonder, why bother? Like, where is the story even going at this point? 
To use the earlier comparison, people were addicted to Attack on Titan because Eren changed as a character over time, whereas Kafka just always stays the same. And while AOT had all of these mysteries and there were all kinds of crazy plot twists and deaths, Kaiju number 8 only has like a few plot twists to make up for the redundant story that just does the same thing over and over again. Now admittedly, this is true for the manga up to maybe chapter 50 or so. I do have to admit that I did end up dropping the manga, but that really only proves my point. If I dropped the manga because it felt like it wasn't going anywhere, and the sales started to drop last year, then there's a chance that maybe this is why the sales are declining. And if you don't believe in the sales, go ahead on Twitter or YouTube. Besides basic chapter reviews, see how many people are reacting to new chapters on social media. See how many people are still saying Kaiju number 8 is the next Attack on Titan on YouTube. You're going to find that it's also a fraction of what it used to be. And the fact of the matter is it's because Kaiju number 8 just isn't that good anymore. It does still have a significant following, and that's mainly because of the other things it still does well. Mainly the fact that the characters look cool and there's a lot of cool fights. So if that's your thing, awesome. Kaiju number 8 may have lost me, but I genuinely hope that fans of the series can still enjoy it. But then we finally get the anime, and it looks like this. Which brings us to the big question of what's going to happen now that we have the anime. Which is really two questions. The first one is okay, is the anime going to look as garbage as these trailers? And trust me, the trailers are that bad. Take any shot of Kafka in the trailers and take any panel of him from the manga. It's like night and day. So naturally, one might wonder, how did this happen? Why is this a thing? So I did a little research and found out that the anime is being done by Production IG, which does help a little bit. But Production IG has done a ton of work and their name is kind of all over the place. So that alone doesn't really help us. Because they've done work on shows like Psychopaths and Haikyuu, but this doesn't look anything like those two. At least, I don't think so. So I looked a little bit deeper and discovered that the chief animation director and character design leader is Tetsuya Nishio. He's done a ton of key animation and character designs for Naruto, but he also did the key animation for a little show called Furikuri. And once you start to put Furikuri and Kaiju side by side, suddenly you're like, eh, this is kinda making sense. Once you have that context, you start to understand that no, they're not trying to make these characters as ugly as they possibly can. They're just going for a rougher, more abstract approach. But here's the problem with that. That might be okay in a show like Furry Curry, which is meant to make you feel like you're tripping balls. But in a basic battle shounen, you need some consistency. You need the classic solid black lines. Take One Piece, for example. You can do a rough style for stuff like the OPs and the fights, but the episodes look absolutely terrible if you do that. It's because that's just not how the source material looks. It's the same thing with how they did Scott Pilgrim. Science Saru is a studio that's infamous for its rough approach to animation. But because Scott Pilgrim, the comic series, has a very conventional sort of look, they made sure to tone things down and stay faithful to the source material. Here, it almost looks like production IG is just doing their own thing. Which is why I'm kinda worried about the future of this anime. Now, do I think it's going to be a complete failure? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to have the exact same arc as the manga. With animation talent from shows like Naruto, I think we are guaranteed to get some anime of the year quality fight scenes. But as we can see by the trailers, most of the stuff in between is going to be comparatively worse. However, that's going to be for manga fans mostly. For anime casuals, which this show will largely appeal to, that kind of stuff will mostly get overlooked. So for the first two seasons, I see Kaiju number 8 doing fairly well. But once it hits that later story, I see people losing interest in the fights and not wanting to invest in these boring characters, especially when they look the way they do. So while Kaiju number 8 is definitely going to be the talk of the town for a while, I really wouldn't get your hopes up. But maybe I'm wrong. What do you think about the anime? Where do you see it in two years? Share your thoughts and see where everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then make sure to check out my video on Kagurabachi. In that video, I explain why Kagurabachi will be the next Demon Slayer. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.